Um, and man, to see the guys come out both sides of the ball uh, with that intensity and with that fire, I mean, I was just sitting there, you know, I take a second sometimes when I'm on the sideline <clears throat> and I just, you know, absorb it all. And to see the guys, the type, the type of energy and, and the, the, what they had in their eyes, I was like, yeah, I, we, we headed towards the right direction. Um, and man, just to be able to come out and get a win and see guys put it together when it, when it matters most, it's definitely been huge. And the Las Vegas Raiders are back in the win column. And joining me in the fifth quarter, presented by Twitch, I'm Eddie Pascal, by the way. We're hanging out with the boy, Will Compton, Playoff Willie. And, Will, before we get rolling here, man, we got to talk about Josh Jacobs. We're going to talk about what this means in, the, in a big picture for your 2022 Las Vegas Raiders. But Josh Jacobs working hard tonight. You might be the only man in professional sports that's working harder. We got single Willie dad, single dad Willie tonight? <laughs> yeah, man, my wife, she left me today. I had to go. I had to take her to the airport. She's gone until Tuesday night. So the dads out there, they I know they feel my pain uh, because I had to do I had to do uh, uh, I do bedtime duty tonight. I'll have to do it tomorrow. I'll have to do it Tuesday night. But it's not the only time she leaves me like once a month. Last month, she left me for five for like five nights, bro. But your boy, I'm telling you, by the end of the year, I think I'm going to be in the running for father of the year because your boy is figuring it out, dude adapting, surviving, and advancing, doing it all, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. And this is so fantastic because the last time we talked to you, unfortunately, we didn't have that much good things to talk about because the Raiders, unfortunately, lost that game. But, dude, the Raiders needed this one, Will, in a big way. They finished it off 38-20 over the Houston Texans. And can we? I think we just start here. I want to talk in a bit of like a historical sense what Josh Jacobs – also, shout out the boys right there. Uh, in a historic sense, what Josh Jacobs is doing – we have a Slack channel that we have, and it's just all stats numbers, right? Just good intel. And some of the Josh Jacobs ones that came through today are unreal. I will just go in order, and then I'll give you the floor. Josh Jacobs, as of today, has surpassed Marcus Allen for the most yard, excuse me, most rushing yards in franchise history through a player's first game. He is the first Raider to record 140 plus rushing yards in three state games. His three rushing touchdowns today tie a career high. He is the, uh, and then today is also the most points scored by the Raiders so far this season. I mean, in a historical sense, dude, like it's it's hard to kind of overstate what Josh is doing. This is a guy who is playing out of his mind. He is clearly kind of the heartbeat, the engine of this Raiders offense. And he's made it very abundantly clear, Will, like when the Raiders are at their best in 2022, number 28 has got to lead the way. Yeah, man. I mean, you, you read off a, a, a slew of numbers for him, but he runs angry. Like he caps people off at the end of, at the end of runs. And you see like when they're having success, he's touching the ball around 20 times a game. I mean, this is, is, is this is uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Is this his third game in a row with a hundred plus? It sure is. Yeah. I mean, the dude, like a, you can tell he's running like he didn't get his fifth year option picked up. And I think that that goes as a player speaking on that. I feel like I can, I can, uh, I can speak to that because there's a there's a, a bitterness that just pisses you off when something like that. I can assume I wasn't a first round pick to where there's a fifth year option to get picked up. But as a as as a player to know that n that option wasn't picked up or to, to know that you're not in negotiations for the extension or to where it's like, oh, it looks like they're going to move on from me from when I was one of their top draft picks years ago. I know that's got to light a spark under him. And I have a cool story about Josh because I, it could not happen uh, to a better dude as far as when it comes to playing football, being in the locker room with him. When we got our asses handed to us, I'm allowed to curse on this show, right? I think within reason. I mean, you're, you're a reasonable man. So you know the words that yeah, are probably, yeah, well, that are probably off limits. I'll try not to get too juiced up because yes. that's what, uh, <laughs> what, what, like watching all this come to put now also, the Raiders getting their first the, the Raiders getting a win when they had to win. Like all their losses, their four losses has been like a combined 14 points. They've always been like that close this year. I think this gets the ball rolling for them. But to speak on Josh a little bit more, last year when we got our butts handed to us by Kansas City, it was like the week that I got signed, we went out to KC, we did the whole stand on their logo thing. We got everything handed to us, bro. Uh, Josh had a big fumble early in the game where I think they scooped it up and scored either in the first series or the second series. And it just snowballed from there. But I remember being in the locker room after the game and like, 
the, the dust is kind of clearing up. Guys are going out to the bus and everything else. It's a small away locker room and uh, I'm packing up. And one of the last guys to leave the locker room is Josh. And Josh comes over to me because I had to run with the boys in 2019. And he come over and he was like, hey, come man, like, what are you seeing? Like, what are we not doing enough of? Or like, I just feel like I'm let, I, I let everybody down at the beginning of the game because I put the ball on the ground. He's like, but man, like, how can we not start? How can we start like winning games? Or like, do you, have you seen anything just being around this week that you feel like you can that you can see or hit on? And I didn't have nothing because I had just gotten there. But you could just see like you could see the passion and the fire like in his voice, in his eyes. You could feel like he had let everybody down when obviously it's not on one player, one play, one game, none of that stuff. But I feel like it just speaks to him because you're that late in the year and you got one of the star players coming up and asking about, yo, are are you seeing anything? Because I just don't know. How do we get over the hump? How do we do this? How do we do that? Like I'm trying to find ways to X, Y, and Z, but I think it just speaks to the type of like player he is on top of all this, because the guy that you see out there running the football, it's a, a, I'm sure it's a bag, a slew of uh, reasons why uh, he play. He's been playing at such a high level. Like, yeah, I'm sure he's motivated because he's that fifth year option to get picked up. But you just see a guy who, like, loves to play the game, and he plays it a way to where I'm sitting back at home, and it's like, damn, it's kind of nice that I'm not banging my body out there because dudes like Josh Jacobs are out here taking souls on the football field. But the dude's running angry, and I love how, how pissed off he runs. And you can just see it, and I feel like it's something that the guys have to lean on, the boys have to lean on. Uh, the offense has to run through is the running game because every time you put the ball in his hands 15 plus times, good things happen. Like they had that 17 point lead against the Kansas city chiefs last week. And he was, or a couple weeks ago, and he was terrorizing that defense, like capping dudes off. And so I feel like that's kind of the formula that the boys need to lean into, like going from here on out. And I'm glad you brought up kind of that second half ever because you look at Josh's line from today. He finishes in total with 20 touches, excuse me, 20 rushes, 143 yards, three touchdowns. He throws in uh, three catches for 12 yards as well in, in the passing game. But he had 98 yards in the second half, Will. Like, nine, he, he almost went damn near for 100 yards in the second half. So, like, I'm curious from a dude who made his money on the defensive side of the football, like, what does that feel like? When you're the opposing defensive line, when you're the opposing linebacking core, and you just see this dude getting juiced up, and you know that, hey, in this final 30 minutes, we're going to see a lot of number 28. And candidly, the Texans just couldn't do anything to stop him. Yeah, Vrabel, Vrabel refers to his the scrappy dudes. Like he calls them street rats. Whenever I played on the Titans, he called guys street street rats. Like the dudes who win in the fourth quarter – and seeing seeing one of your star players, especially at the running back position, like watching Derrick Henry for the years that uh, I've been on his team, and then Josh is similar. Like a dude who gets better in the second half, especially in the fourth quarter, and you're able to run the ball and basically snatch everybody's soul because you can't stop the run even though you know it's coming. It's demoralizing as a defense because you know as a defense, if you can just make a team one-dimensional, and especially with the Raiders, like they have so many weapons, it's almost refreshing to see them lean on the run game a lot because you take out a lot of the guesswork with building out all these packages for all these weapons you have on offense. When you have a successful running game, it opens up everything else uh, from there on out because then you got to stack the box. Teams now are going to have to absolutely shut down Josh Jacobs because the thing, uh, the thing with the Raiders, again, they see a lot of success when they put the ball in his hands 15 plus times, 20 plus times a game. Um, but, yeah, speaking as a defender in that second half when you're just getting ran over and you can't stop it, and you know all the all that's going to be talked about on the sideline is, hey, we just have to stop the run and make them one-dimensional, and you can't do that. Like, it's it's demoralizing as a defense. And, and I think a big thing to, to kind of key on tonight, Will, is we talk about kind of Josh's success in the second half, but really Josh's success in the second half really translated to the Raiders' success, especially in that fourth quarter. I mean – I think that the final score is a, is a little deceiving in the sense that like the Raiders end up winning 38-20. But going into the fourth quarter, this was a tight I mean the Texans were up 20 to 17 going into the fourth quarter. The Raiders rattle off 21 straight, 21 unanswered in that final frame. Like when you're a, when you're an offense that candidly has a, had a hard time putting together a full 60 minutes, like what is a performance like this not only for Josh but for the offensive line, for Derek, for all those guys to be like, "Hey, when we needed to put points up, when we needed to be at our best in that fourth quarter, we were at our absolute best and we ran away with this football game. That's the type of stamp that the Raiders have needed all year because they've basically had 
every opportunity to win each game that they've been in this year. And they always seem to lose it, whether it be in the second half, definitely the fourth quarter. So being able to put together that fourth quarter, like, yeah, you'll go back and say, we got to continue to put the, put together four quarters of our best football because you can go into the locker room after that game and say, fellas, you bring everybody up. You see what we did in the fourth quarter. We win that game 38-20. There's going to be a lot of tape that we're still going to look at. No, we left a lot of plays out there. Imagine if we are firing on all cylinders from uh, start of the game to the very end of the game and we play like we just did in the fourth quarter. Like there's a lot of momentum to build on. But as far as like uh, team chemistry, camaraderie, and momentum from go, moving forward – Having that stamp in the fourth quarter, kind of coming back, you know, uh, behind a few points, Um, but winning 21 nothing in the fourth quarter, I think is massive for the boys, for their mental, uh, like going forward, because again, they've struggled like putting games away in the fourth quarter and to come out and beat the hell out of the Texans in the fourth quarter um, in that fashion, I think is, is speaks volumes going, uh, going ahead. You know, and objectively speaking, Will, obviously the best game the 2022 Raiders have put on tape in the early goings of the year, uh, you know, obviously the 18-point the win. But one thing that's like really stood out to me, and, and I was I wrote it down this week because I wanted to ask you about it when you came on, was we've heard from Josh, uh, both Josh's, Jacobs and McDaniels. We've heard from D.C. We've heard from the coordinators. We've heard from everyone about the fact that, hey, you're coming off of a bye, right? And, and the bye is so good for the self-scout and evaluating and seeing what you do well. But like for me, like the football dummy, like what does that really look like over the course of a week? Over you know, over the course of I guess the past thirteen days since the Raiders played a game prior to today, like that self scout, that understanding of like what we do well and things that maybe we need to get better at, and whatever they were doing seemed to work and seemed to pay off. And, and Josh McDaniel said after the games, like we kind of saw the fruits of those labors today, some of those decisions that we've made over over the bye week. But like for a player, what does like a bye week look like in terms of making those adjustments? From the player perspective, it's big on like recovery, getting your body, you know, back in tune. Like, again, I know it's only been uh, there were what one in four going to the bye week at five games. But you got to remember, like you go through a training camp, you go through preseason, like you go through a lot of stuff. So getting your getting your body back up to par is like the biggest thing as a player. And two, I think uh, the number two thing going back, coming into a game from any bye week is having a lapse in energy and effort and getting back into the building, getting back into the rhythm because you're away for a week. Right. And I feel like every coach, everybody's kind of on the the edge of their seat. Like, Hey, we got to come out hot. We got to come out uh, ready. You have to come out uh, with a sense of urgency, especially coming off of a, a, a one in four performance going into the bye week And so I feel like those are the biggest things as a player, your body and coming, coming back into the building with energy and a sense of urgency that, Hey, we're going to have, we cannot come out flat at all because teams tend to do that coming off of a bye week or being at home or doing whatever they're doing on their bye week. As far as a coaching standpoint, you hit on it earlier, but it's a lot of that self scout stuff. You get to, you get to get a beat on if you have any tendencies out there, any formations that are giving, giving anything away. An easy example, right? Is say you're in an 11 personnel, you're one running back, one tight end for those, uh, for everybody out there uh, that doesn't understand what personnel means. If it's 21 personnel, two backs, one tight end. And 11 personnel, one back, one tight end. Say 11 personnel for for an example. Foster Morrow, he's number uh, he's number 87. Yeah. Yep, sure is. If Foster Morrow's in the if Foster if Foster uh, Morrow is in the game uh, and it's 11 personnel, I'm sure the tendency probably speaks to more 90 percent run when 87's in the game and it's 11 personnel. If Darren Waller goes in the game and it's 11 personnel, your uh, antennas are on a high alert for more of a pass. So that's just a very that's a very basic, simple way of of thinking about how do you actually self scout? Because when you're on defense, breaking this stuff down again, if it's 12 personnel, understand who's got their hand in the who's got their hand in the dirt in a three point stance and understand who's standing up in a two point stance. If Darren Waller's up in a two point stance, uh, the uh, the tendency is probably a high pass. Or if he's even down in the three point stance, Darren Waller's not in there to block anybody. It's going to be a pass. Look for play action. Look for a straight drop back. If 87's in, hey, look for more of a run game. They're going to run this play, that play. But that's a very basic uh, example of what self-scouting looks like. And so you can kind of tip yourself off to where, hey, are we giving any uh, – are we giving any tendencies away? Are we doing anything within our calling, our personnel that's giving, uh, giving a bead for the that's giving a bead for the defense? Same with the offense. So you get to kind of take in everything that you're doing, how you're calling a game, how much you're leaning into a higher percentage of run pass, who's in the game when that's happening, and kind of like addressing those weaknesses, like moving, coming out of the bye week, or playing into those tendencies and 
having a little wrinkle off of that to where it keeps the defense on their toes. I'm always speaking from a defensive standpoint, the boys played linebackers all life. You know, one of the things that the adjustments that, you know, when we talked, the last time we talked to you was following the Titans game week three. And, and one of the things that we talked about at that time was like, look, the Raiders were in this game. It was just the red zone led them astray, right? The the red zone betrayed them on offense, on offense and on defense. Well, today, dude, the red zone was dramatically better. And I think that's one of the things that Josh McDaniels kind of alluded to is an area that had to get better. Offensively speaking, Raiders go three for three in the red zone. Like when you're putting up 21 points instead of nine, like that's hard to overstate, especially in today's NFL. Like there's a big difference clearly between 21 points and nine points. But I think for this team, Will, and, and you know that this as well as I do, historically speaking, the past couple of years, the red zone has not been kind to the silver and black. So I think that to have a night like today or an afternoon like today, where when you get into the red area, you're putting up points and you're putting up major points, I think that is one, uh, a very tangible adjustment that we saw coming out of the bye week. But two, I think that's something that you can build off now as you get ready for back-to-back -back road games going uh, going to the East Coast. Yeah, I, I mean, when you're anybody sitting on the sideline, you see your offense uh, bring home seven instead of three points. It's a huge breath of fresh air because, again, it just changes the flow of the game, the momentum. And when you're putting up seven instead of three, guys are believing a little bit more. Coaches are getting a little bit more aggressive with their play calling. Again, I was given a simple personnel breakdown of how self-scouting could be, but it speaks the same with situational. Like, hey, are we getting a little too are we getting a little too cute in the red zone? Are we getting a little too conservative with the play calling in the red zone? Uh, so, yeah, coming away going three for three is is massive because red zone being a situational master is the key in this game. And uh, I, again, I think it speaks to the, the coaching staff for preparing that way and looking at the red zone package and seeing what they, where they've been successful, seeing where they haven't been successful and how to uh, optimize the players more. Um, and then, you know, player wise, I know speaking as a player, like seeing your offense put up seven instead of three, you're kind of like pumping your fist on the sideline. Like, Hey, it's going to be a good day, boys. If the, if the offense is scoring in the red zone now. Well, it, I mean, it also helps when Josh Jacobs is averaging seven yards to carry, you know what I mean? And like, Dude. like that, that makes everything a lot easier, doesn't it? Will? Yes. Yes. And again, that jumped off because I think he touched the ball, what, 20 times? 20 times. And was averaging over seven yards of carry. I mean, that is huge, man. When you got a running back who's doing that, and you, you get to where, you know, you might try and hit a play action. You might try and hit a deep ball when it doesn't work. It's like, hey, give it to my man in the backfield because he's absolutely just running people over. And again, it's not he's not just he's not just running the rock and getting not getting contact. The dude is getting yak. And not only that, but he's looking for contact. And that dude, it's such a momentum boost when you have. Uh, when one of the boys are out there like looking for contact and capping people off, like it just brings energy everywhere. The offensive lineman, one of everybody wants to block for you harder. Everybody wants to play. Everybody wants to pick it up around you a little bit more. So, dude, it's just it gives life to the offense when your running back is doing that. Josh, ever truck you in practice? No, you can ask Josh. I put him on his back <laughs> probably five, six times. I don't know. You have to check the tape. Oh, I love it. But you know, it's it's so funny. Like on his on his like a semi serious note, though, it's like I part of me like when you get down in the red zone, especially, it's like I'm certainly not a a football savant, right? I've never pretended to be. But like at some point, if you're if you're Coach McDaniel's, you see what Josh is doing, just hand him the ball. Like it doesn't it doesn't have to be overly complicated. It's like you see Josh, you see the look in his eyes. Let the man eat. I mean, he's clearly been famished all of 2022. And I think that what's been really rewarding for us, I think, especially the past two weeks going back to the Kansas City game, is like Josh is running out of his mind and Coach McDaniels has given him the opportunity to build on that, right? They haven't gone away from Josh. And I think that you see certain, you know, ex you know, certain situations in the NFL where you're like, oh, let's get away from the run game, blah, blah, blah. But I think to his credit, Coach McDaniels has realized what he's got and he's realized the zone that number 28's in. He's like, yo, go go and eat, big man. Like, th this is on you. Run behind that big offensive line and go, go get six. Yeah, and, and I don't want to let it slide at all, but the big guys up front, yep. too, like you get some situations earlier in the year – so there, there might be struggling in pass pro, but when you get momentum going in the run game, like the confidence that that everybody has, like, yeah, obviously 2-8 has a look in his eye to where it's like, hey, hand him the rock. But not only that, but the offensive linemen love it too. Like when you're imposing your will and moving the line of scrimmage to where he's getting a two-yard head start to get behind his pads, like it breathes life into everybody. When you get too cute on offense, I know the big dogs are over there on the sideline. Like, hey, run the ball. Just keep it simple, like the whole kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. And it's like it's one of those things to where I don't want to. Uh, well, we don't want to as much as like we're loving the scene, the way Josh Jacobs is running the football. Like the big guys up front, man. I think it speaks uh, speaks volumes to them too. 
too, because, you know, they've, they've struggled at the beginning of the year. And again, it's like keeping it simple, running the football when you're having success doing it, dude, just keep doing the same thing over, over and over. If it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Make them, make them stop you, right? Like make them make yeah. you adjust. You know what I mean? And I think to your credit, like Absolutely. The, the big fellows up front, man, I mean, only one sack for Derek today, like they have held up. And I think that that one thing has been, like I said, really nice for us, especially over the past couple of weeks is we have seen no shortage of off- offensive line combinations the first quarter of the season, but it feels like now that the Raiders have found their five, they have found the five guys in the positions that they want to put them in and, and kind of find that gel and, and find that, that kind of cohesion. And like, like to your point, when you're a defensive player and you see the big guys up front on the offensive line, the opposing offensive line, and you feel them kind of in their rhythm, I imagine that's got to be a scary thing to see coming downhill at you, right? Yeah, and, and not and not only that, yeah, absolutely. Like when you're on defense, you're trying to you're trying to win on first and second down. You're trying to win big on first down, so you make a team one dimensional always. Um, but again, speaking to the sideline demeanor and the confidence that happens when when the boys go down and cap off a, a touchdown drive, they're coming over on the sideline saying, "Hey, continue to run the football." Like they're everyone's asking, "Hey, let's continue to run the football." And so when everybody can get on board with that, man, everybody sees the same vision and shares the same passion. It's tough to stop. And again, Josh is running angry. The dude is running like the boys didn't pick up his fifth year option, which you love to see. It's not like he's it's not like he he's had any decline or any growth from years past because he's always been this way. Uh, But seeing that kind of extra spark that he has right now. And again, the confidence that the old line have like this is this is momentum that. The boys can build off of when you got a team that's running the ball well. And I know we're, we're I know we're only two and four. I know we're not throwing parades. We're not shutting the city down. So because we just won a Super Bowl. But when you're two and four and you win in that fashion and your running game is picking up right now going into November, that's when you want the momentum because the teams who run the football well late in the season are the teams who stick around. And it feels like it feels like I'm not going to get ahead of myself. It feels like the Raiders are trending that way. We got to fix a little bit on our third down defense. When you look at the stats coming out of it, we got to we got to convert a little bit and get off the field on third down. But again, teams that establish a running game and establish an identity, I think that's a big thing. We keep uh, we keep talking about this run game, like they're starting to establish an identity with the run game. And teams who identify with running the ball, we're in the middle of the year, but as they continue to do it and build momentum later in the year, those are the teams who stick around. And perhaps most importantly, Will, a run game, historically speaking, travels well. And the Raiders are now going back-to-back road games. are headed to the East Coast. We'll see the team in New Orleans on Sunday. They will then stay in the East Coast uh, and then take on the Jacksonville Jaguars that following Sunday. But to your point, man, is it feels like to me we are now, what are we, six games into this? We're six games in, and we know, I think— who the Raiders are offensively in 2022. I feel like for that first month of the season, we were trying to figure it out. Like, it's like, you know, you have all these playmakers out wide. You got Devontae, you got Renfro, you got Waller when he's healthy. You got all these all these dogs on the outside. But when we have seen now, when the Raiders are successful, they are incredibly balanced offensively. Tonight, for example, the Raiders ran the ball 27 times and they threw the ball 27 times. They are balanced offensively and they let Josh Jacobs lead the way. So I think for me... You know who you are. You can lean into who you are. And now you can start building those blocks and trying to tweak things and make, you know, a half quarter adjustment here, a half quarter adjustment there. And all of a sudden now, you know who you are when you're getting ready and you're going to this latter part of the season. Yeah. Again, man, the run game. It's like you're able to build on the run off of the run game. Like that is like that is where you want to be because Derek, he's got the arm. He's got the capability to do a lot. But putting the game on putting Putting it on the line with him, uh, with him and his arm and his playmaking ability, every game by throwing the ball 35 plus times a game with all those weapons and everything else, like it's a sense of relief. I can imagine for the boy uh, DC when you're running the ball that well because it takes a lot of pressure off to win the game with your arm or win the game through the air. Uh, again, like when you're established running the football it makes it that much easier for an offense to be successful because again, then the screen game opens up, the play action pass opens up. You can spread it out a little bit more. They have the weapons to spread it out if they need to, but it's one of those things that they get to do. They don't have to do, which is where you want to be. And you want to build off the run game 
uh, behind Josh Jacobs. And let's just give DC his roses for a sec. He goes 21 of 27, 241 yards, finish, and a touchdown, finishes with a QBR rating of 116.2. So, hey, he might not throw the ball 40 times, but, I mean, he's being really efficient when, when he's be, yeah, when, with what he's being asked to do back there. So big shout-out to DC. But, hey, Playoff Willie, I know that you're on dad duty tonight. I know you got a lot going on, so we'll get you out of here. But before we do, 30 seconds of plugs. Where can the people find you? Oh, social media, I'm everywhere, boys. At underscore Will Compton on Twitter and Instagram. I think TikTok is well, but I don't really, you know, I'm not really in it yet with the TikTok game. Bussin' with the boys. Subscribe, rate five stars. It's everywhere. It's on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Google. Uh, me and my boy Taylor Lawan, he just had a, a season ending IR ACL. So we are we're we're back at it on the bus tomorrow. It drops, we drop every Tuesday. Uh, every Tuesday and Thursday, I believe. But wherever you get your podcast, that's where we are, busting with the boys. Love to hear it. And if I'm looking at our schedule, Will, we have a few more uh, playoff Willie uh, appearances in the fifth quarter. And I'm if I'm looking at my notes correctly, can we confirm that we are going to get you to Vegas at some point on the, the latter half of the season? I'm, I'm looking at two dates, and I see two asterisks for Will in Las Vegas. What, are we able to... I tell you what, whenever we get done here, we can talk about it. But you know your boy, there's some rumors out there that a year 10 might be happening. So you just don't know. I personally would love to still talk about the silver and black no matter where I am. Um, We can talk about it. We can figure out what the variables are. But I think we can make it all happen. I hope. Number one, if year 10 is not happening, then that means I'll be out in Vegas a couple times this year. If year 10 is happening, maybe I'll be on another team and we'll still get a little dust of playoff, Willie. It depends on where we're at, brother. Now that, that is a tease. So, for Eddie Pascal, our man Will Compton, Al who's handling all the mixing on the ones and twos, everyone back in the control room, thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging out with us. It feels so good to talk about a Raiders win. It has been way too long. Uh, We will see you guys next week. Our man Jason Fitz is back in the mix with us postgame. And Will Compton will return possibly from a location to be determined. But all the same, it was great to see him. Shout out to Will. And uh, we'll see you guys next week, same time, same place, for our next episode of the fifth quarter.